do you think of when you think of an adventure? Chances are something like this. Maybe even something like this. But if your last two years has been anything like mine, chances are your adventures have looked a little bit more like this. But the thing is, if I'd asked you what you were doing during these pictures, you probably wouldn't have described it as an adventure at all. You'd probably have said something like, oh, well, I was out on a dog walk, or, you know, we were getting some fresh air. What would it have taken to describe this as an adventure? If you Google adventure, the first thing that comes up is an unusual and exciting or daring experience. And when, for me, when I was growing up, the emphasis was very much on the daring. Adventure was snowboarding through powder fields. It was trekking up the sides of volcanoes. It was steeper, it was higher, it was faster. And it was preferably something that others might not dare to do. And this was how I lived my life and where I really got my sense of identity and possibility. And then, one day, approximately 11 years ago, almost overnight, all of that changed. That freedom, that independence that I had been cultivating so carefully disappeared. Yep, I had my first child. <laughs> and I remember when I was pregnant and well-meaning friends would say to me, oh, you know, your life is going to totally change when you have kids. And I'd be like, no, not me. I'll be strapping the child to my back. We'll be off trekking around South America. And I did actually say that, by the way. And they would look at me with a knowing smile and, yeah, boy, were they right. Overnight, I went from someone whose default setting was a backpack to someone who couldn't even get out the door from a pint of milk. And this hit me really hard, because it turned out my comfort zone was in some far-flung exotic place, and it certainly wasn't sat on the sofa with a breast pump and a very hungry baby. And whilst I loved my son with a ferocity I cannot even begin to explain, I couldn't help feeling that a part of me had disappeared. So fast forward a few years, and the arrival of a sister and the late night feeding frenzies were a distant memory, and most weekends were spent on the side of a football pitch, using in, usually in the freezing cold rain. And don't get me wrong, I was broadly content with my life. I consider myself incredibly fortunate to have two beautiful, healthy, active children, a husband I loved, a job I enjoyed. There was nothing fundamentally wrong. And yet there were those moments, usually late at night, doom scrolling through social media, you know you've been there, when I was looking at photos of friends who were off on these amazing adventures, and they just felt so far out of reach and a part of my life that had disappeared. And then one day, I was out on a walk with my kids, probably looked something like this, you recognize the mud, um, and we were out in the local park, and, you know, I would love to pretend to you that I was embracing the moment and we were having a lovely family time, but in reality, they were dawdling. We were probably late for something, and I could feel the frustration starting to rise. And as I felt that frustration growing, my daughter yelled out at me, and she said, Mummy, Mummy, come over here, come and look at this. Now, I could pretend to you that I can remember what it was she got so excited about. I have no idea. But what I do remember is the realization in that moment. Because as I went over to join my kids, I realized they were on an adventure. To them, this was unusual and exciting and possibly even daring. It wasn't a once in a lifetime, years of meticulous planning type of adventure, but it was an adventure nonetheless. And I wondered, what had happened to me that I was no longer able to see that as an adventure? When did I become so jaded, so all-knowing, that the only opportunity for adventure was somewhere in a distant land, climbing up a mountain? When had I lost my sense of wonder in the everyday? So I decided to give it a go. On my daily dog walks, I would take paths through the woods that hadn't been down. Now, these frequently ended in dead ends, and I usually returned home covered in mud and brambles and possibly very late. But that wasn't really the point, because what I found as I went on these excursions was that my excitement, my anticipation returned, my resilience returned. 
And I started doing this. I started looking for opportunities for adventure in the everyday all around me, whether it was getting out my paintbrushes, connecting with a whole, an old friend that I hadn't spoken to for a while. And every time I did so, I felt a part of me start to return. And the thing is, without this shift of perspective, I'm not quite sure how I would have managed over the last two years. Because as all of our worlds contracted through the pandemic, we were all forced to start looking for adventures closer to home. And the thing is, it's easy to blame the pandemic for this contraction. But actually, the reality is, as we get older, as our lives take on more responsibility, we naturally start to become less adventurous. And this was actually shown in 2018, a UK TV station commissioned research, and they interviewed 2,000 participants. And they asked them, you know, when did you start living or stop living so adventurously? And the average age was 34. And anecdotally, we know this to be true, because while our 20s are often times of exploration and trying new things, our 30s are often full of family responsibility, our work commitments increase, we very rarely have the time, the energy, or the resources to take on these big adventures. And while that is totally understandable, the problem is, is the longer we spend inside our comfort zone, the more inclined we are to stay there. And when we do stay there, we start to lose touch with our adventurous selves, and this impacts on our work, our willingness to take risks in all areas of our lives, whether it is family relationships, what we're doing outside of the home, and our sense of self-belief. But when we nibble at the edges of our comfort zone, we continually find our way to take ourselves outside of it, we start to reclaim that resilience and that adventure for ourselves. So as the result of my experiences, there are three things that I would like to share with you about the power of everyday adventures. The first is that adve everyday adventures ground us right now, right in the present, in the everyday. They allow us to embrace our lives right where they are. And this doesn't mean that when wonderful opportunities for larger adventures come along that we should dismiss those, but it means we don't need them as a catalyst for change. We can make that change for ourselves. It gives us a sense of agency, and all we need is our own imagination. And I'd like to give you an example of this. So I'd like you to cast your minds back, which I'm sure you can do, back to January of last year. And for those of us in the UK, we were plunged into a third lockdown. And I don't know about you, but for me, that wasn't the most, most fun I've ever had. Whereas the first two lockdowns, tough as they had been, had been times when the sun had been out, maybe we'd tried new things, tried, taken on new adventures. January was cold, it was wet, we'd just had... The, the whole of the Christmas holidays had been taken over. And to give you an idea of how desperate I was to get the kids back to school, I'd actually taken them two days early. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing. Um, so here I was at home, working full-time, homeschooling two very sad and miserable children. And January, if I'm honest, was pretty awful. And it got to the start of February, and I thought, you know what, I can't carry on like this. I cannot do another month with this sort of atmosphere around. So I decided to set myself a challenge. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do 28 days of everyday adventures. One adventure for each day of the month. And so I did. And here's an idea of some of the things I got up to. You can see I went out for a run with a head torch. That was quite scary. And I tripped over something. But, you know, it was interesting. I made some new food. I'm not a very good cook, so that was a massive thing for me. I got out my paintbrushes. I put on some glittery clothes. I tried all sorts of different things. And I won't pretend it was always easy. Some days I couldn't think of anything to do. Some things, quite frankly, I just couldn't be bothered and wanted to stay in my pajamas. But what I can tell you is I felt fundamentally different during February than I had in January. I was looking forward to every day to see what it would bring. Ideas were flowing, my creativity felt alive, and I felt much more able to cope with two very sad children who were desperately missing their friends. And this brings me on to my second point, which is that regularly taking ourselves outside of our comfort zone comfort zones increases our resilience. And this has been shown in numerous research. Back in 1987, a rutter showed that controlled exposure to stressors 
where those could be managed, help build us our immunity for difficult situations in the future. It's been shown in the world of elite sport, where when elite athletes are exposed to positive stress, which sometimes we know is eustress, when they're exposed to positive stress, this increases their resilience and has a subsequent increase on their performance too. And we've also seen it in the world of outdoor activities where participants in outdoor activity interventions have shown to increase their resilience when they take part in these. But why is this the case? Some of you might be familiar with this model. It's from a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, which was first published in 1987 by Dr. Susan Jeffers. And it's gone on to be a bestseller multiple times ever since. But I absolutely this, love this model because what it shows is that every time you push at the boundaries of your comfort zone, every time you take a step outside, you expand that comfort zone to get into another one. And it grows and it grows and it grows. And so this brings me to my third point, which is that adventure, as you'll probably remember from my initial slide, can be something huge and big, but it can also be something small and everyday. But fundamentally, adventure is all in the mind. You might be dangling one-handed off the edge of a cliff, but if you're used to dangling one-handed off the edge of a cliff, actually, that's no more of an adventure for you than stepping outside of the front door. Conversely, actually stepping outside of the front door, especially after the last two years, may be the biggest adventure of your life. The way I like to define adventure is that sort of icky pit of your stomach feeling, dry mouth, where your mind is coming up with every excuse about you don't want to do it. But you get that tingle of excitement about, what if, what I might, like, might I learn? And for somebody, that might be a 10-foot wave. Someone else, it might be dick, dipping their toe into the sea. Adventure is unique to every single person, but it really is all in the mind. So to summarize then, adventure, everyday adventures allow us in, to embrace life right now, right here in the everyday. They build our resilience by regularly taking us outside of our comfort zones. And the real beauty of everyday adventures is they only need our imagination. And that means that adventure is accessible to everyone, regardless of the time, the energy, or the resources that we have available. So to finish, I would like to offer you an invitation to live more adventurously in your own lives and go on a few everyday adventures yourself. And I'll leave you with a question. What adventure will you go on today? Thank you.